Hi, my name is Emil Kiner. I'm the product manager for Google Cloud Armor on the network security product team at Google Cloud. Today, I'll be talking to you about how to protect your applications from distributed denial of service attacks, as well as targeted web attacks using Cloud Armor. We'll start off with an overview of network security in general on Google Cloud. From there, we'll discuss all the latest and greatest announcements and new features that we've launched with, for Cloud Armor over the past several months. After that, we'll dive in and discuss in depth how application protection and DDoS defense works. And then we'll discuss some customer use cases about how to protect your applications in real world scenarios. Security follows a shared responsibility model on Google Cloud. We work to secure our network and infrastructure and provide customers the tools necessary to do so in their own projects. We enable and encourage customers to follow a defense in depth approach and deploy security controls at various levels of their stack and infrastructure to enforce access controls and ensure data and mission critical workloads remain private and secure. On Google Cloud, we have several key network security controls. Starting from the outside in, we have Cloud Armor, the Identity Aware Proxy, and the Global Load Balancers as our Layer 7 controls at the edge of the network. Cloud Armor, in conjunction with the Global LBs, protect applications from DDoS attacks. The Identity Aware Proxy is part of our Beyond Corp line of products to allow access to internal applications without needing a VPN. Firewalls in red apply at the VPC level and can be used to customize access for north-south traffic as well as east-west traffic into, out of, or through VPCs. Firewalls are used to define VPC boundaries but can be as granular as per host. VPC service controls in blue can be used to control access to and from GCP services and managed APIs such as BigQuery or cloud storage to or from the internet, GCP VPCs or on-premise sources. In yellow, we have packet mirroring that allows you to deploy a tap and mirror packets at the VM or container cluster boundary to a configurable collector destination. Finally, we also support sending outbound traffic through Cloud NAT, as well as various interconnected VPN options to enhance privacy and security. Cloud load balancing is a critical component of the end-to-end -end network security story. We have three flavors of global load balancing, the HTTPS load balancer, the SSL proxy, and the TCP proxy. The first two load balancers are SSL terminating, meaning you are able to offload the SSL termination and decryption to our edge proxies and will handle enforcing SSL policies upstream of your infrastructure. By uploading your certificates and configuring custom SSL policies, you can ensure only pre-approved SSL TLS versions and ciphers are allowed on a per VIP basis. All of the global load balancers employ a two-tier global AnyCast-based system rather than a DNA-based load balancing mechanism. We broadcast the load balancer's IP address globally and end user requests are routed to and terminated at the geographically nearest point of presence or POP to them. From there, the request is coalesced and proxied over Google's fiber backbone to the customer backend in the geographically nearest region with available capacity. At each stage of the process, we optimize on latency, taking into account capacity if the underlying application is deployed across multiple regions. Cloud Armor is the web application firewall and DDoS mitigation service able to provide layer seven protection and filtering for workloads deployed on GCP, on-prem, or with other infrastructure providers. Cloud Armor is deeply integrated with the global load balancing infra infrastructure and is able to inspect and filter incoming requests after the SSL termination has occurred. More specifically, with Cloud Armor, customers are able to protect their HTTP-fronted applications from DDoS attack, filter incoming requests by geography, or most L7 parameters like request headers or cookies. Moreover, as a web application firewall, Cloud Armor contains pre-configured rules to prevent against the most common attacks and vulnerability exploit attempts. Users have access to real-time telemetry in the form of logs sent to cloud logging containing Cloud Armor's decisions on a per-request basis, a monitoring dashboard that gives granular views of allowed, denied, or preview traffic, as well as a correlated WAF security findings that are sent to the Cloud Security Command Center. 
As of March of this year, a rich set of WAF capabilities for Cloud Armor was made generally available. Pre-configured rules can help mitigate the OWASP top 10 risks. We have ported over the Mod Security Core rule set, introducing rules to detect and block SQL injection and cross-site scripting attempts as generally available. Additionally, rules for local file inclusion, remote file inclusion, and remote code execution are available as beta. The rest of the core rule set is targeted for re release over the course of this year. With geo-based rules, customers can enforce access controls based on the source geography of each request. The IP to geo mappings are sourced from Google's own geo team, so you can be sure of its accuracy. We've also launched an extensible rules language that allows users to configure custom layer seven filtering policies across request headers, request parameters, and cookies. Finally, Cloud Armor is now integrated with the Security Command Center, with Cloud Armor findings as well as assets being sent to the CSAC dashboard to alert defenders of potential attacks against protected applications or websites. We have recently greatly increased the flexibility of Cloud Armor deployments to protect an expanded set of customer infrastructure on GCP, as well as in hybrid use cases located on-prem or in other cloud providers. Cloud Armor now supports protecting cloud CDN origin servers by enforcing security policies on dynamic requests, as well as cache misses destined for the CDN origin server. Customer applications are often complex, serving both cacheable static content, as well as dynamic requests from the same services. With Cloud Armor able to inspect and filter requests destined to CDN origin servers, users can now mitigate computationally expensive cache busting attacks, as well as help protect dynamic portions of websites and applications from OWASP top 10 risks. Enterprises often need to enforce a consistent set of security controls for their applications no matter where they are deployed, whether they are migrating to GCP or running in permanently hybrid configurations. We recently launched support for internet network endpoint groups that allows customers to leverage all of Google's edge infrastructure, including cloud load balancers, cloud CDN, and cloud armor to protect their website or application no matter where they are hosted. Now Google can help protect your applications, whether from DDoS attacks or other common web attacks without having to deploy the application directly on GCP. Finally, GKE ingress support for Cloud Armor has recently reached general availability. GKE users can help protect their containerized workloads by placing them behind the cloud load balancers and configuring a Cloud Armor security policy for layer seven filtering and WAF use cases. Also, we are proud to announce the availability as a beta, a highly requested capability to allow or deny traffic through a Cloud Armor security policy based on a pre-configured named IP list. Many of our customers have received traffic into their GCP projects from upstream service providers, such as other CDNs. Prior to this capability, customers would have to self-manage the list of IPs from upstream providers to ensure they can receive those requests through a Cloud Armor security policy. Now customers can configure a security policy to deny all traffic from the internet by default and allow only traffic from desired IP ranges by referencing the named IP lists. For now, the named IP lists are global in nature and not user defined. We are launching the beta with three launch partners, Fastly, Cloudflare, and Imperva, but intend to add the other service providers over time. Finally, we are excited and proud to announce the beta launch of Cloud Armor Managed Protection a set of DDoS mitigation and WAF services offered at two service tiers, standard and plus, which bundles together all of the features and capabilities of Cloud Armor with additional value added services, all for an enterprise friendly, predictable monthly subscription. Last month, we published a blog post announcing that Google had successfully detected and mitigated the largest DDoS attack ever reported to date. Now, with managed protection, Google Cloud customers can leverage the same edge capacity as well as DDoS defense expertise to protect their own applications and other publicly exposed workloads with a subscription plan that offers enterprise friendly and critically predictable pricing, which is not driven by incoming request volumes. Cloud Armor WAF usage includes rules, policies, and requests are included in the subscription plan 
meaning Cloud Armor monthly price will remain relatively fixed even if you are targeted by a high volume layer 7 DDoS attack that needs to be mitigated by Cloud Armor. Over time, we will expand the services offered in the plus tier, starting with the upcoming Google curated rule sets like the named IP lists announced previously. For more information on managed protection, please refer to the Cloud Armor blog announcing the beta, as well as the product page for a sign up form to get more information. On GCP, customers enjoy an unrivaled level of DDoS protection from a wide variety of attack types. It is important to understand that DDoS protection cloud customers are able to receive is the same that has been developed over the past 20 years to protect and ensure availability of Google's own services. Thanks to the global nature of Google's network, we are able to absorb and dissipate or otherwise mitigate layer three and layer four network or volumetric attacks across various components in our global load balancing infrastructure. The way this automatic mitigation works is that all three types of global load balancers will only proxy requests back to the customer backend service with that when that request has completed a three-way TCP handshake. For volumetric and protocol-based DDoS attacks like UDP amplification or reflection, as well as TCP floods, the, DCP, the TCP handshake is actually never established. So we can safely drop this unwelcome traffic far upstream of your infrastructure. This happens automatically in upstream of customer infrastructure. Next, Cloud Armor security policies can be configured and attached to the load balanced backend services to further provide layer seven application layer protection and access controls. Cloud Armor security policies can be configured to limit access based on source IP or geo, a pre-configured WAF rule set, as well as our fully customizable rules language to craft custom layer seven filtering policies. Diving in a bit further, Cloud Armor security policies can simultaneously invoke pre-configured WAF rules, as well as user-defined rules to inspect request headers, parameters, and cookies. Policies are stored, evaluated, and enforced at the edge of Google's network far upstream of customer's infrastructure. In the example on this slide, we have a policy that first denies access to any external clients requesting access to the admin portal of our example application. Next, the Cloud Armor security policy is configured to invoke pre-configured WAF rules to detect and block known signatures for SQL injection and cross-site scripting attacks, which collectively have dozens of sub-signatures under the hood. Finally, if the request is neither targeting the admin portal nor containing a SQL injection or cross-site scripting signature, we will allow that traffic as configured through the default rule. Now we'll discuss some example use cases for how customers can protect their applications. In order to protect your application from volumetric and protocol-based DDoS attacks, all that is necessary is to deploy one of the global load balancers in front of your HTTP or TCP workload. Once fronted by the load balancers, Cloud Armor in conjunction with the LBs will automatically mitigate DDoS attacks like DNS amplification attacks, SYN floods, and other common layer three, layer four DDoS attacks. The only requests that will be proxied back to your applications are ones that have completed the three-way handshake and are well-formed layer seven requests. To add layer seven protection for your applications, the first thing you need to do is configure a Cloud Armor security policy and attach it to the backend service that is hosting the application or workload to be protected. Cloud Armor security policies are used to customize access to protected resources. There is a one-to-many relationship between policies and backends, meaning one policy can be attached to multiple backend services, but each backend can only have one security policy protecting it. Each policy consists of a prioritized list of rules as well as a default rule. As an incoming request tries to reach the customer backend service, Cloud Armor will evaluate each rule in priority order against the traffic. The first matching rule will win, meaning it will dictate the action to take allow or deny in this case. If the traffic doesn't match any rules, then the action configured with the default rule will be applied to either allow or deny the traffic through to the targeted backend. Visibility and telemetry is key for any comprehensive application protection solution. Cloud Armor exposes this information in near real time across several telemetry platforms at Google Cloud. 
Her request logs are captured and sent to cloud logging containing all decisions that Cloud Armor makes with regard to layer seven requests, as well as which rules fired and why. Real-time telemetry for request volumes is available at various levels of granularity through cloud monitoring in our pre-configured dashboard to help you visualize and build alerting policies against changes in traffic patterns. Finally, correlated security findings about unexpected traffic spikes are sent to the Security Command Center to trigger investigation and possibly incident response workflows. Putting it all together, here is an example of a sophisticated use case that leverages the ability to dynamically update Cloud Armor security policies through our feature-rich REST API or CLI. Here, we see an application fronted by a cloud load balancer with Google Cloud Armor enabled. Telemetry is collected into a monitoring and analytics workflow, either homegrown by the customer, commercial off the shelf, or using GCP's native data analytics tools, such as BigQuery. Other sources of telemetry and logging are added to the system, including from the application, from Cloud Armor, and other devices on the network. Next, threat or fraud detection algorithms will correlate the various telemetry and generate additional signatures of malicious, malicious traffic to block upstream. These signatures can then be dynamically pushed into the Cloud Armor security policy as a new rule to quickly block the newly detected malicious behavior all at the edge of Google's network. With that, I wanted to thank you for joining me today. If you have any other questions, please check out our recently published blogs or the product page, and don't hesitate to reach out with any detailed questions and we'd be happy to follow up with you. Thank you.